Okay, this is our CJF Chapel service, and today we're going to do a little presentation on Is Jesus the Messiah? Hope things are going well in Texas, and I am here in Ohio where it snowed yesterday, so how exciting. So let's go forward here. Is Jesus the Messiah? Now, I think if anyone's read the Bible, obviously, especially the New Testament, we probably notice that the way the the apostles and the early followers of Jesus spread the gospel was through the use of messianic prophecy. There's a book that was written a long time ago by F.F. F. Bruce, who was a very well-known New Testament scholar, and he wrote this book called The Defense of the Gospel in the New Testament. He said, uh, when it comes to like the book of Acts, he said the primary way the apostles established the fact that Jesus was the Messiah was by appealing to the fulfillment of the promises of the Old Testament. Obviously, when you read through the book of Acts and other parts of the New Testament, we see that the apostles primarily appealed to the Tanakh or the Jewish scriptures to show that Jesus was the Messiah. See some of these passages here. Um, I know some of them cut off at the bottom here, but the point is that Messianic prophecy really dominated the early Messianic community. And remember, they're preaching to Jewish people who already believe in God. Uh, you know, today, when you try to share the gospel with Jewish people, as I do or you may do, we know that a lot of Jewish people just don't even believe in God. And so sometimes it's hard to even use the Jewish scriptures with them because a lot of them, you know, not even sure if there is a God. So sometimes you have to back up and kind of show them that there is a God or talk about God's existence with them. Of course, just depending on who you talk to, what kind of Jewish person it is, but it seems more and more that a lot of Jewish people don't believe that God exists, and we're running into a lot of secularism in the Jewish community. Now, this may be a little funny to you, but I'm trying to illustrate here. So a lot of Christians, of course, say they follow Jesus Christ. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Savior. We talk about Jesus Christ all the time. But you know, sometimes when we say this, it comes across as maybe Jesus is saying, Hi, I'm Jesus, and my last name is Christ, and my parents are Mr. and Mrs. Christ. Is that what happened in the temple when his parents were looking for him? Did they say, Paging Jesus, your parents, Mr. and Mrs. Christ, are trying to find you? Well, that's not the case. And I'm just using an illustration here. Sometimes we don't get the full meaning of what we mean when we say Jesus is the Christ. So when we say we follow Christ, we're really talking about that word Christos there from the New Testament. That's where we get the English word Christ. And the Hebrew word is where we get Mashiach from, the anointed one. That's someone who's anointed with oil in the Old Testament or anointed for a very specific task, such as prophets, priests, and kings. And of course, as I said, we know that God certainly anointed people by the empowering of the Holy Spirit in the Jewish scriptures in certain periods. So we're talking about Jesus as the Christ. We're saying he is the anointed one. He is the Mashiach, the Jewish Messiah, the Mashiach of Israel and the nations. And of course, Yeshua HaMashiach means Jesus the Messiah, as I was just saying. And so it's nothing wrong with using the name Jesus Christ. We just have to make sure we know what we mean when we say that. Now, Jesus' central message was the kingdom of God. I think if you read the Gospels, you know that that was the main thing he talked about. For example, he says right here in Mark 1.15, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel, the good news. So Jesus didn't necessarily say repent and have the best life now. He said repent and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. And notice Jesus did not say, repent, I've come to bring a new religion in 43,000 Christian denominations. Of course, we know by now that denominationalism is something that we're not going to change. People are comfortable within their denomination. But all I'm trying to say is when Jesus says, repent and believe the good news, the kingdom of God is here. He didn't really talk about this as far as starting a brand new religion and starting all these denominations. Those things started much later. And so we need to look back in the original context of Jesus' teaching. Now, some people will debate, of course, especially with the Jewish community, whether Jesus really is a Messiah. And they may ask, well, did Jesus really do what the Messiah is supposed to do? Did he fulfill the Messianic task? 
There's some say he couldn't do it because he isn't the Messiah. Some say he did do it, but he only did it spiritually and invisibly. And then some believe that he will do the final messianic task in the future. There'll be a future earthly kingdom and a restoration of Israel in the future. That's what we call futurism or restorationism. But let's look at this, this a little bit here. There's no doubt there's passages in both Testaments, or in especially the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures, that speak of a atoning suffering Messiah and a ruling and reigning Messiah. We know that the traditional view is that the Messiah comes, first of all, to suffer and be rejected and atone for sins. You have passages like this in the Jewish scriptures, such as Psalm 22, Psalm 118, Isaiah 52 to 53, Daniel 9, 25, 26, and Zechariah 12, 10. But there's also passages about a Messiah who will rule and reign, a kingly Messiah, a Davidic Messiah. Of course, we see these passages here. And so sometimes, you know, it's confusing. I mean, the rabbis eventually had to come along and come up with a two uh, doctrine or two Messiah view or du dual Messiah view that, seemed, that they came up with where they thought maybe there was a figure that comes first to atone and suffer and the second one is reject or the second time he comes to rule and reign. But they didn't really say that is one person like we do with Jesus. They thought it was a, the first figure was called Messiah ben Yosef and the second figure is called Messiah ben David. And so that's uh, in the Jewish literature and they do believe that there is there are two figures there. So we merge them into one because we think Jesus came or Yeshua came first of all to suffer and atone and be rejected and then he will return to rule and reign. And of course, Jesus deals with this in the book of Acts. Uh, you know, his disciples come to him and they say, you know, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel at this time? And so they come to Peter or Peter comes to Jesus and asks this. And it says here, when they came together, they asked, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said to him, it's not for you to know the times or seasons. The father is fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you is to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, the ends of the earth. Notice Jesus doesn't necessarily say it's stupid to ask that question. He doesn't say how silly of you to ask if I'm going to restore Israel. He tells them this is not the time and he tells them to go preach the gospel for now. But as I said, he didn't offer a rebuke and you know some think that maybe Jesus is saying they misunderstood the universal emphasis of his mission and they're purely stuck on just what's going on in Israel and political views of the kingdom. Now there's another passage in Acts 3 that talks about this, a similar theme about restoration, when Peter is preaching to his uh, Jewish countrymen there. It says there, now brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance just as your rulers did also, but the things which God announced before him by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, and he thus fulfilled, therefore repent and return, so your sins may be wiped away, in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send Jesus the Christ appointed for you, whom heaven must receive, until the period of restoration of all things about God, which he spoke about by the mouth of the holy prophets from ancient time. So Peter is telling them, you need to repent, of course. If you repent, Jesus will return. But you notice the same thing here is about restoration, the same thing that Peter talked or asked Jesus about in Acts chapter 1, about are you going to restore Israel? And notice he says here that the restoration will happen that was spoken about by the mouth of the holy prophets from ancient time. Well, what, what's Peter talking about there, about the restoration that the holy prophets spoke about from ancient time? If you look at these passages right here, any Jewish person at the time of Jesus knew of these texts. They knew that there was there were texts in the Old Testament or the Tanakh that spoke about a physical kingdom on earth, spoke of a restored Israel, spoke of Israel being blessed by the nations where Jerusalem is at the center of everything. And of course, the Jewish people at the time of Jesus knew about this. That's why Peter is asking Jesus in Acts chapter one, are you going to do this now? You just rose from the dead. But now maybe it's time for you to do this. Are you going to bring this restoration of Israel? And of course, Peter, Jesus, as I just said, told him, don't worry about it. Go preach the gospel for right now. So this is what Peter's talking about here. This restoration will take place. 
that was spoken about through the Holy Prophets. Now, we believe that restoration will come uh, when Jesus returns, but these are prophecies or passages in the Tanakh or the Jewish scriptures that have not come to pass yet. These are unfulfilled prophecies. And this means that for right now, part one of Jesus' is coming means that he is a Davidic king and he is sitting on the throne of David at the right hand of God. But he will come back to set up his earthly physical kingdom on the far right there, the second coming passages. So those things are coming, but they just haven't happened yet. And for now, just like Jesus told his disciples, his apostles, we are preaching the gospel. We are trying to make disciples and we serve the Lord with all our strength through the power of the Holy Spirit until he returns. And so this kind of wraps it up. Just our general teaching overall is Jesus the Messiah. It depends on how you define the Messiah. It depends on what you think the Messiah is supposed to do. But there's nothing in the Old Testament or the Tanakh that says the Messiah cannot come two times. The first time is to be su to suffer and be rejected by his people. The second time is to rule and reign. So I hope this motivates you in reaching out to the people around you. May we be praying for the peace of Jerusalem and be praying for Jewish people to come to know their Messiah, the Jewish Messiah of Israel and the nations. Have a good day.